Hey everybody, welcome back to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan, and today what I wanna do is walk you through the core design set for Oxygen, which in my opinion is the best design set out there at this time. And right now it is a $99 lifetime deal, which I think is amazing. And as you can tell, their website looks beautiful, uh, just as it is. So it's got some really cool custom functionality. But what I wanna focus on is core and how it will improve your workflow in Oxygen. So of course they have live demos, and we can take a look at that, but what I'm gonna do is walk through an example on a real Octogen install, and what we're gonna do is set it up from the ground up. So right now on this site, what I have is a couple of pages, got a menu going, but on this there is no content whatsoever, and I'm gonna show you how well put together this is from the perspective of things like classes, but also how quickly you can start to build new content for your site. It saved me a lot of time in uh, less complex scenarios, like when a client wants a new page or a new section. Instead of me trying to have to you know, play with a few different designs, I can just come in here and pick, let's say, a content block and just then, you know, basically I have a, a really good looking uh, foundation and I can customize this because of how well put together the classes are. If you're interested, come take a look at OxyNinja.com and you can kind of look at this stuff yourself. But basically the way that this works is in Oxygen, if you go to your settings, what you do is go to the library tab and I have recently started to disable the default design sets. Um, I don't really use them all that often because I was a little underwhelmed with how they look and I found myself using the same things over and over. So I personally just you know uncheck the default design sets and then you click on this enable third party design sets button. Once you purchase it, you get given an API key from uh, you know Oxygen Ninja for the core design set and it pops it in there. You just simply click on update and you're done. The other thing that Oxy Ninja gives you is a simple little import plugin. So you only need this the very first time and I'll show you what that looks like. Once you walk through the basic setup process, then you can come deactivate and delete this plugin. So it's just a temporary kind of setup bit. And you can see it says it adds the selectors and the style sheets required for core. All right, so enough blabbing. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of all of these tabs and let's start by going into our main Oxygen template that I have for the site-wide template and we'll set up a header and a footer. So as soon as your page loads, you can see this is the import plugin that I just showed you. So all you have to do is click on yes please to bring in the selectors and the style sheets. And now all of the default styles are gonna be imported for you. You can see now you can uninstall the plugin. And if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. You will be prompted with this every time you load the builder, which maybe they'll fix in the future. Uh, but it's just as simple as going to your plugins and deactivating and deleting it. So if we were to go look at the manage and style sheets, you can see there's some stuff in here. And then also if you go to your uh, selectors here and you expand that, there's a new core option and there's a ton of selectors here. What this means is that it's just all so well put together. There's so many different classes already applied to these elements that it makes it really easy and consistent uh, to not only add these to new elements, but also to make changes to existing elements and their classes. So let's start off by going to the add button. And then down here under the library tab, if we click on design sets, now of course because I default I deleted the um, you know the default design sets, we're only going to see the core option in here. But if you had them all, core would be down towards the bottom. So go ahead and click on core. Just like some of the other design sets in Oxygen, there's a few little pre-built kind of blocks here. Uh, but what I want to do is walk through a in the sections and elements, adding in a header. So the headers are all amazing. There's some really, really cool ones. And what I'll do is let's just look through some of these. So I'm gonna go to header with mega menu dropdowns. That'd be a pretty typical layout that you might want. And what, what's gonna happen is it's using all of the existing oxygen elements. There are a few cases where there's some code blocks with some basic stuff going on, but nothing crazy. So you can see this is using the header builder, which allows for things like sticky headers and overlays and so on. And look at these. Look at how awesome that is. That transition is beautiful. All of this stuff is awesome. And because of the way that these are set up, it's using all of the inbuilt oxygen elements. So these are divs, these are simple text links, and they all have classes assigned to them. So if you look, you can see that there's the, the uh, core is the C, that's the first part of the class name, then menu link, and then margin bottom. So menu link would allow you to change things like the color for all of them. Let's just go set it to like the blue instead of the black. And now you can see everything changes because the classes are so well organized. Uh, let me go back to what it actually was, something like that, the black color, that would be realistic. And then let's say you want the hover color to be the blue. So now when I put my mouse over that, then of course the hover color changes. And these classes are just all right there ready to go for you out of the box, which is awesome. 
What's really cool about the way these classes are organized is then you have a separate class for the margin. So let's say for whatever reason you didn't want some of you know, this particular element to have the margin, you could simply just delete that. Or if you were to add a new text link, you could just simply type in the class name and add that in there. So that's really, really cool. As you can see, this is all super awesome. This is just a simple image container. So you could swap that out instead of it being the picture of a boat. Let's change it to the picture of the shovel. And if I put my mouse back over it, sure enough, there it is. So let's save this and then we'll take a look on the front end outside of the builder. And of course, sure enough, it works perfectly fine. This is something that would take you an extremely long time to achieve outside of the core design set. I don't even know how I would begin building something like this, to be honest, but because I have core now, I can take this and adapt it to my use case and it's just really fantastic. The other thing is that you'll notice it inherits all of your fonts and your weights, which is really awesome. So that's gonna come from your global settings. If you go to global styles, let's change the font to something like, I don't know, Lado. Then you can see there's not the, um, the fonts built right into these individual elements. They're all inheriting the font that you've chosen in your settings. That just makes it really kind of well thought out once again, because then you can make these changes without having to go to every single individual element and make those changes. It's just clearly set up by somebody that knows what they're doing. So in this case, let's just change this to like Montserrat or something like that. Change it once again, and there you can go. There you go. You can see everything is changing just like how we want it to. So that header works for me. I'm going to go ahead and open my structure pane and then just go back to the body section here. So that way, when I add in a new element, it doesn't end up inside of my header builder. So let's go back to the add tab and let's do a content section. Actually, no, let's go to the heroes and titles. That would be what you typically want. So I want a an image on the left and a contact form or like a purchase form on the right. And there we go. There's one built right in. So I'm going to pop this up because of course the header is going to go on top. And then if we take a look inside this div here, there is a form short code for fluent forms, which I don't have installed on this site, but all I would have to do is just change it to gravity forms or Ninja or whatever you use. And it would work perfectly fine. Again, what's really cool about this is all of this stuff is just built using the oxygen elements. So there's a little bit of CSS, but if you take a look at this, it's all just for the fluent form styling. So of course you would just adapt that to gravity forms or whatever you want, but you would have to do this anyway. So that looks really, really nice. And again, it's all just built using the oxygen elements. Now these link wrappers, you can see all of the classes. So link light versus link dark. These are all reusable. It's just really, really great how well organized this stuff is. Okay, perfect. So now we have the, um, the hero image with our form here. Let's add something else. Let's go to add. And then in content, maybe we want like the three features. There we go. Look at that. It's just awesome. So one thing is that this blue is kind of the uh, default core styling color. But what you could do is go to manage settings, go back to colors, click on core, and then under the accent color, you can change it to whatever you want and everything is going to adapt to your correct color. So in this case, let's change this to something not hideous, hopefully, um, purple. I kind of like an aqua blue color. Let's do something like that. So that's perfect. Now you can see that we've changed our global color and everything has adjusted to that. Our icons, this background card, this button, the button up here in the main menu, everything. It just looks extremely good. Okay, so I am actually editing the site-wide template, so I don't want to put these content sections in there. I was getting a little bit carried away. So let's go ahead and delete these. And then in our structure pane, I'm gonna go back to the body tab. Oh, actually, we have another little section here. Go back to the body tab and then click on add. I'm gonna go all the way back to the basics, choose inner content, and then I want the size and spacing, min height to be, let's say like 85 VH. Now I'm gonna go back to the body tab and under core, I'm going to choose a footer out of the library. So let's go to sections and elements and under footers. Let's do like, I like the light theme. Let's, let's go with this one. So there we go. That's a perfectly usable footer right out of the box. You may want to make changes to it, but you certainly can do that. And again, everything is just really well laid out. So all of these are going to be different classes. So these are going to be footer links instead of menu links. So the, the adjustments you make here to this class, of course, won't apply anywhere else except if they have this particular class given to it.
Another really cool thing is stuff like the transition class. So you can apply this to elements that don't necessarily have any of the other classes to inherit these slow kind of color fade transitions on hover like you can see. So that means you don't have to go recreate the hover effects on every element, which is something that I really like. I definitely try to do that intentionally, but I've never really broken it out into an individual class like this, which I think is just extremely smart. All right, so we have our header and footer. Let's go ahead and go back to our admin panel and let's go to our homepage now and actually edit that with oxygen so we can get some real content on this site. So I realized I made a mistake and didn't put the inner content in the middle of the header and footer. I fixed that off camera, but what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and just deactivate this core plugin because otherwise I'm going to get that pop-up that says, do you wanna import the selectors and style sheets? If you forget to do that, just click on the cancel button and you don't have to worry about it wiping out anything you've done. Okay, so now we are actually working on the home page. So I'm gonna quickly go back to the library tab and under design sets and core. I'm gonna go back to our hero element that we used, which was this guy right here. And then I'm gonna go back to the content section and we used the uh, three wide section right here. Let's find one more element in, and look, there's that global color that we had, which is super cool. Um, let's go back to the content section and let's add in like a list of features. There we go, pretty sweet. That all looks perfectly usable right out of the box. And then maybe one more content element because it's the home page, maybe like a gallery. Now this is set up, let me open the structure pane here to just be kind of like a custom grid. So this is all just built using the CSS grid in the style sheet so you can look at this right here, the core CSS grid. You can look at all that. If you're not familiar with CSS grid, you have to do a little bit of Google searching on that but it's all perfectly usable right out of the box. I love the way that this looks, kind of that sort of like hybrid grid, kind of like masonry style. But again, these are all just using the built-in oxygen image elements, so it's super simple to change out those photos. I'm gonna change this to be a picture of a carrot, and there we go, just done. You know, in a matter of seconds, I have my taste, uh, you know, my touch on this particular element. All right, so now we have, let's go back to the top here. We have our hero section, we have this cool little like intro headline with some more information on our product. We have the full feature list, and then we have an image gallery. Now it's brought us down to the footer. Let's save this real quick and go take a look at the front end. And sure enough, we have a pretty much fully functional website in a matter of moments. Of course, you'd need to spend a little bit more time kind of making it fit your use case, but th this basically does 85% of the work for you. Now I wanna go back and take a look at some of these other elements. So I'm gonna to go to the structure pane real quick and I'm just gonna delete all of that stuff. And actually, if I click the undo here, these are kind of nested inside of this first div here, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but you might run into some structure issues down the line. So I got a little preemptive here, not paying attention to the way these things were nesting, but you could simply just drag these out of the div if it will let you do that. <laughs> of course not, it's not gonna, there we go, oh, there we go. Drag and drop definitely needs some work. In any case, you can see I just pulled that section out of the div, so not the, the worst thing in the world, just my own fault for not paying attention to where I was adding those elements, but it doesn't really matter ultimately. So again, I'm just gonna close out of this stuff and let's take a look at some of the other content in here. So if we were working with a list of blog posts, this would be a great way to show our list of blogs. So let's expand the structure pane real quick and you can see we have a repeater element here that is pulling in our posts. So I don't have any posts on the site, but you can see that the principle is pretty much the exact same. The query is set to post. So if you have blog posts, it's gonna pull those in. And in our layout here, you can kind of get an idea for what it's supposed to look like. All kinds of different blog layouts here. They all look great and it just saves you so much time instead of you having to try to set all of this up yourself. It just looks super, super good. Like, you know, you could sit here and spend an hour trying to get to this point and, you know, have something that doesn't look half as good, or at least in my case, because I'm not a designer. Let's keep going and look at some of these other elements. So you have a simple contact page. You could add these like in your footer or, you know, at the bottom of your page template, something like that just using the Google Maps element here and some locations for your business if you have those. Let's go back to add. We'll take a look at some more content elements here. You can see there's just so many of them. Some other cool ones are these alternating columns. These images, of course, are just SVGs built in so you can replace it to be whatever you want. 
this stuff just all looks so good. So pricing is another really cool one. So I like the way these pricing tables are set up. Let's do this pricing plans block real quick. So you can see it has a really nice looking pricing table. Think about how long this would take you to set up if you're somewhat new to Oxygen. Even myself, this would take me a while to set up because there's all these different divs kind of nested inside each other, configuring the layouts, setting up the classes, like all of this stuff for 99 bucks is just crazy. So I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't purchase this stuff. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea for how Core is laid out and how good the design set looks. It's all extremely usable and there's just a ton of content in here. So another cool thing is the FAQ. These are just built using the uh, you know default kind of oxygen toggle elements, which are not the most usable thing in the world. But when they're already you know kind of set up for you like this, it does make it much easier for you to kind of work with this. But again, all this stuff is just using the inbuilt oxygen elements. I'm going to go ahead and save this stuff, and then let's take a look on the front end. And these don't look very good, but <laughs> I just wanted to walk through some of the content that we added to this home page here and all these nice transitions and the colors are all consistent. The styling is perfect. It all looks really, really good. I wanted to mention that I am not being paid to make this review video. I actually paid for this product with my own money because I wanted to use this for projects that I work on for clients. And I'm just really happy that I did. So I figured I'd share it with you. I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and buy it if you find yourself working on new websites quite frequently or having to add and update content it just makes your life so much easier. And especially if you're in Oxygen, it just basically is a no brainer. I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions about Oxygen, please look at the links in the description for a variety of resources, including an Oxygen course. You can visit the premium forms and you can visit the Facebook group. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.